So yes, HPXL, we're a, a small software company founded in 2000 with over 1,200 customers. We have a wide range of software covering all aspects of the house building and home improvement uh, business. Today we're going to be looking at the Rapid Takeoff Kit, which is Plans Express working together. And if you buy the Plans Express Rapid Takeoff Kit, you also get Quick Quote, which is a brand new uh, software product that we're bringing out uh, later this month. We're hoping to start delivering later this week or early next week. The interesting thing about the software is that it also talks to all of our other software products. So you've only got to enter your data once into the system. So what is the rapid takeoff side of the software? Well, the rapid allows you to take off uh, the plans by tracing over an existing drawing. It then builds a 3D model and allows the system to calculate all the materials within the estimate. It also allows you to generate complete estimates by starting a brand new drawing. It's designed by builders for builders and estimators working in the house building extension and renovation market. Unlike other takeoff systems, rapid takeoff comes complete with hundreds of fully estimated building assemblies. It does not just take off lengths and areas and export them to Excel, leaving you to do all the hard work. It does all the hard work for you. Combined with Estimator Express's specification system, it gives you complete flexibility. It's linked to live merchants with over 500,000 products and prices with your discounts from all the leading merchants. We work closely with all the merchants to deliver your prices and products to your PC. We're going to have a look at an actual traceover. We're going to trace over a simple drawing and to produce the 3D model and export the information to Estimator Express. You can bring in DWGs, DXFs and PDFs, which are the most important ones, JPEGs, and you can even bring in uh, paper drawings by scanning them in and bringing them into the software. If you purchase the 3D visual estimating kit, you'll also be able to produce photorealistic images, 3D floor plans, and you can even drop the photographs of the image that the system produces straight into live photographs. This photograph was actually taken off Google Street. Okay, so what's Quick Quote? Well, Quick Quote allows you to load over 200 house extension and projections in brick, render and stone finishes. By the way, you can mix and match templates to create complex designs. So you can have a, an estimate that's part brick part stone, part render if you want, and you can assemble as many of the extensions and components onto the drawing to create very complex buildings. So once you've loaded your particular uh, template, you simply enter a few dimensions into it, foundation depths, heights of ceilings and so on. The software then builds a 3D model from that and automatically creates an estimate for you. Next, you choose how you want to build the, the actual building you're, you're constructing. Do you want to build it in brick and block, or brick and ICF, or block and block, or a mix of those products? Simply select them from the pull-downs. You can also change all the dimensions, how deep the foundations are, how the footing is constructed, what the cavity width is. The software allows you to capture all that detail. This is not a broad brush, brush tool. It's a very accurate system. Next, you work your way down the screen, adding structural openings, doors and windows, from a library of over 7,000 doors and windows. It's simply a question of picking them from the wizards and selecting the number. The same sort of process goes on with the brick and block walls, so the internal walls, and the estimate is complete. You can also work through the building in terms of rooms. So if you're, say, doing an extension and you're also doing a renovation at the same time, you can create separate rooms into which you are applying various renovation systems. For argument's sake, you may be picking a, a bathroom where you want to completely gut it, plaster it, skirt it, tile it, put a new bathroom in, and you can do all of that within a room. The other really interesting thing about uh, Quick Quote is that you can save that room 
as a template so that later on if you want to do a room you simply load it and the job is done. You can also mix and match those rooms so you can create templates for say bathrooms or a three bedroomed house and you can merge it in with the geometry that you've created with your main template. It really is very flexible. The other thing that you can do with the system is if you've done a drawing for the main envelope and you export that into Estimator Express, you can then also add on other components such as the prelims, subcontract quotes, uh, your plumbing and heating, rather than actually doing that within the drawing environment. So a very powerful, very flexible system. Once you've done the, the main meat and potatoes of the, the building, you can then add site establishment, plant, site cabins, toilets and so on, subcontract quotations, and of course, external works and drains. Once you've done that, and for an extension, this literally takes minutes, you ex uh, press Create Estimate, and it is exported into Estimator Express. Once you've got that, it will then build the quote for you. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you how, how we actually use uh, the uh, rapid takeoff process, and then we'll do uh, another uh, estimate using the quick quote process so you can see how the two systems work. They both have their strengths and their uses. For argument's sake, if you want to provide a drawing or a 3D model for your client, you might prefer to use the takeoff system. If you want a quick estimate very quickly, you can do it with quick quote in, in just a few minutes. Okay, so let's go back into the drawing software. Now, the example I'm planning to do in the next few minutes is to estimate this uh, extension. I just scroll the drawing out. You can see what it is we have here. We've got a rear extension with a, an apex on it, a couple of bifold doors. So, I'll give you an idea of the sort of things that you can readily do with the Plans Express side of rapid takeoff. Now, before I start actually doing it, what I've actually done, I've brought in the, uh, the PDF and I've dropped some construction lines on there. Hopefully you can see there are a few faint uh, blue lines on the screen. I'll show you how you do that. So I go into Drawings and Annotation, pick the construction line, and I can then place that line anywhere I want on the drawing. That just helps me to snap as I'm placing my objects on the drawing. Okay, I'm now going to go back to the architectural menu. Now this contains all of the estimating components that uh, we're, re we're renowned for. If I have a look in the external walls button for argument's sake, you can see there are numerous different types of walling systems that the software will automatically estimate. Brick and block cavity walls, brick and ICF, that's insulated concrete formwork, SIPs, structural insulated panels, external cavity walls, now, all of those can be either brick-faced or rendered. Further down the screen, you can see that we've got uh, retaining walls, multi-leaf brick walls, doing things like garages, garden walls, sleeper walls. So virtually every type of wall you can think of, there is a template for it. Similarly, with internal walls, you can see there are numerous types of walls. Once you've traced over and built your walls, if you wish, you can then apply uh, different feature masonry to it, things like coins and heads and sills, all of those will appear architecturally on the drawing, but they'll also allow you to automatically price them. On the door side, there are over 7,000 different doors to choose from, and we'll have a look at that as we go along. Same argument with the windows. Structural openings, whether you're putting RSJs or concrete beams in, or fabricated steel, there are estimating components for that. Various types of stairs, lots of different types of floors, whether they're concrete floors, rafts, beam and block floors. Uh, on the roofing side, we've got truss and cut roofs, and I'm going to show you how we actually place those. On the attic side, you can create a, an attic from a truss roof or from a cut roof by placing the various components, dropping your dormers in and it will estimate it all for you and give you a 3D uh, representation of it, if you wish. Drainage, all the usual suspects that you will require in a housing or a domestic uh, situation. Landscaping, 
patios, brick pavers, turfing, fencing, and so on. Uh, if you've got the ultimate edition, you'll have the um, full, fully detailed plumbing and heating components. They've got hundreds, if not thousands, of different components to place on the drawing. All of those are automatically scheduled. Same with plumbing. Click on any of these and you'll see that within them there are numerous components. Now all of these items to the left hand side, they will automatically estimate the cost of your plastering decorating. Uh, but if you're just doing a decorating job, you use the tools on the right hand side of the screen to do basic plastering and decorating and renovating aspects of the building. So we're doing an extension on this occasion. So uh, what I'm going to first do, I'm going to trace around the entire house so that we feel like we've got something to attach our house to. And it'll also give you a sense of the 3D model that's created. So I'm going to start by picking a brick and block cavity wall. And I'm going to make that um, a multi-story wall, just in case we decide to put the roof on it. And we pick that one there, a ground floor cavity wall, 2.475 high, multi-story. Now as soon as I pick that, you'll see that the the height of the wall has actually been set at 2.7. This is because the software automatically allows for the, the floor zone. I then work my way through the dialogues and I can confirm the foundation depth and width, depth of concrete, whether I need to support the excavation, the footing details. Any of these values can be changed, but they're all set up to comply with building regs. I then confirm whether I'm plastering, and decorating, and skirting the wall. So if you like, the mouse now knows everything about the wall I'm going to construct. So I click on the wall. You can see at the moment I'm, I'm on the wrong side of the, the wall with my mouse. If I press J on my keyboard, or press one of these buttons over here, you can see that it's gone to the correct side of the wall. And the software is running a little bit slow at the moment because of the, the, the effect of the internet, so bear with me. Sometimes it can get a little bit laggy. So just click around the corners of the walls. You'll probably see in the right-hand corner of the screen the 3D model has been constructed. So there's the walls of the extension. I did say I was going to start with the house. I'll, I'll do that now. Just work your way around, <coughs> clicking around it. I think you'll agree it's much quicker than taking it off with a scale rule, writing it on a piece of paper, or typing it into an Excel spreadsheet. <coughs> If I press refresh, as I did on the top right-hand corner, you can see that all the walls are properly formed. Right, so there we've got the entire extension taken off. Now I'm just going to get hold of the, the existing house, select it with my mouse, and then I can set that as non-estimated. So even though I've got a 3D model of the entire ground floor, the software is automatically um, going to ignore that from an estimating perspective. The other thing I can do if I want is I can select that wall, I can move it back to there, so that I can infill the rest of the wall with the internal cavity block wall. So you can see that you can change the specification as you go along. Right, the next thing I'm going to do is to put an internal wall. So it's just a process of, you, of using the same uh, approach all the time. This is going to be a single story wall. Again, if you look, you can see it's in the 3D model. Now I'm going to put the flooring in. 
I use an extension slab or I'm going to use what we call an irregular slab which allows me to trace around the perimeter of the building rather than doing separate rectangles. I click next, confirm the thickness of the slab, let's make it 100 mil, confirm whether I want a damp proof membrane, insulation and so on, and click next, and then enter in details of the, the plant that I want to use. I don't need a vibrator for this particular job or a power float. I've got a, three or four deliveries. And then trace around the perimeter of the building. I, I could obviously do each room separately if I wanted to, but for speed in this demonstration, I'm just going to click around the various corners. Press C on my keyboard, the software closes, and you may be able to see that there's a concrete symbol there. It then asks me whether I want to place perimeter insulation. So I'm going to say yes, I do. Confirm how thick I want that to be. Get it a bit thicker than the slab so it can go against the screed. And again, I click around the corner. So I don't know how long we've been actually doing this, but probably three or four minutes, but in effect, we've already taken off the walls and the slabs and so on. Okay, so that's that done. I don't want to do any more. And we're going to put some doors in. So we'll go to Crystal Direct and I'll choose a bifold door. And on this occasion, I'm going to pick a three-leaf door. Let's, let's assume it's a 2.4, so I didn't, didn't take a note of it before I started. Choose the door. It then recommends a lintel. Choose the cavity closer. Accept the defaults for the size of the door, or work my way through it to confirm whether I want to plaster the reveals and so on. So anything you can change, just say yes or no to whether you want painting and so on, and software will estimate it. I can then place that in the opening. I'll do the same there for this quick example. Again, you can see 3D model has been created there. Okay, so the, the next thing I'll do is I'll put some uh, structural openings in. quite sure how wide they are so I can use the measuring tool to measure the openings. So that's about 3.6 that one. That one's about 2.864 so let's do that one. Structural opening into an existing wall Put the precise dimension in, confirm the height, bearings, whether I want any bricks or pad stones, confirm the thickness of the wall, size of noggins and so on, press finish, I can then place that in the wall. And when I can just change that dimension, around 3.6. And place it on the drawing. If I refresh the drawing, you'll then see the openings appear there. So you, you've got the, the satisfaction or the visual comfort, if you like, that the system is actually doing and taking off all the, all the different components. So let's just drop a roof onto here. So we'll do it with a cut roof. I'm going to change the pitch to say 25 degrees because I've got to tuck it under the windows. Confirm the soffit width. Things like timber straps, they're all defined in here. Again, the software is going to work out all those for you. Uh, rafter centers, joist centers, heights of faces, guttering details. The system's even going to work out how many gutter brackets you need. And this level of um, accuracy is provided both with Quick Quote 
and your rapid takeoff system. I don't need any uh, tile on the hearts. And in this occasion, I'm not going to prime and paint the face of your boards because I've got plastic sockets. Press finish. And these are the various roof types that I can have. I can have a lean-to roof, one with a hip end, uh, hip, hip roofs, barn hips, valleys and abutments, apex valleys and abutments. And all of these different roof types can be sort of Lego block together to give you most of the common shapes that you're going to come across. So I click OK. Select the wall I'm going to stand the roof on. Incidentally, I've forgotten to mention that down the bottom left-hand side here is what's called the command window. Um, it's, I, I think it should really be called the help window because it's actually giving you advice all the time what you can do with any particular component. So it's asking me to select the wall that I'm sitting it on. It, 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 in effect, it's telling you how high the roof is off the ground. So if you find the two corners it, as the command window is telling me, in the third corner, and in actual fact, I put the wrong roof on there, so I just have to undo that, sorry. I'm trying to talk and uh, do it at the same time uh, proved unsuccessful. So I, I sh what I should have done is pick the lean-to roof. I click OK, select the wall, and the length of the building. And there you can see the, the roof's gone on there in the right-hand corner. I'm not going to do the ceilings at this stage. I'm going to put the valley roof on. Again, by selecting a wall and the corners of the building. And then again, if you look in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see that the software is saying, select T on your keyboard and select a roof to T the roof in. Again, if you look in the right-hand corner, you can see the valleys have been produced. So it then asked me about ceilings. Do I want to do a ceiling? So I'm going to say, yes, I want to do a ceiling. And uh, because we're very short of time this evening, I'm just going to put a flat ceiling on this. Again, I can confirm all the different sizes and variables there, what joist centers, whether I want insulation, uh, the ceiling height, and so on. Press finish. And rather like the slab, I simply click around the perimeter. So, as I say, I'm going to just put a flat ceiling on here because we're a little bit short of time. I press C on my keyboard, it closes the loop, and you can see the icon is shown there. So, I want to put any purlins in, so they will just be a question of selecting the purlins and placing them on the drawing. So I don't want those, I don't want binders, and I'm not going to put the rain water pipes in just yet. You can obviously see that you can spend five minutes and you can do all of that, and the software will create that uh, estimate for you. So if we look in here, you can now see we've got quite a nice 3D model of the building. I'm going to save that. So at this stage, I could now add uh, plumbing and electrics and so on to the drawing, but because we're going to have a look at quick quote as well and produce a quote, I'm going to move straight on to uh, uh, the rest of the software so that we can see how it's going. I'm just going to see if there have been any questions come in from the audience. No, there doesn't appear to be, so that's okay. That's good. I'll, I'll crack on then with the rest of the estimate. So I save that. Just check that I've saved it to the appropriate place. Yes, indeed. And then move on to Estimator Express and Quick Quote. Okay, before I go into the Estimator itself, I'm going to show you a few things about how Estimator Express works. So that you can fully understand that this, this is not a broad brush tool. This is a highly detailed estimating tool that will tell you precisely what you need to build the different jobs. So the, once you've got your, your head around how the software works, you will need to go into the settings to set the system up to work 
in line with your prices and not some broad brush prices. So I go into the price book and from there you can download prices from all your favorite merchants. We work closely with all the merchants to provide live pricing. So your, pro your products and prices from these merchants will come straight down from the internet without you having to make a phone call. And if you have your discount with the likes of Juicens, Travis, Graham's, Keyline, those prices with your discounts will appear in your software automatically. You'll then need to spend a few minutes checking the hourly rate that you pay your labor. How much do you pay them an hour? for any task that they're doing. So what is the price you're paying your bricklayers or your joiners? And what is the daily or weekly rate for your plant? Now the beauty of that is that by just changing one hourly price for say the bricklayer, every task that they do, whether it's laying bricks, blocks, putting a window in, forming a structural opening, is automatically estimated using that price. The next layer in our system is what we call the specification. And the specification is a unique system that we have that allows you to precisely define what labor, plant and materials are used to build your jobs. For example, you might want to use a particular block, a particular type of insulation or a particular plastering system and define how long it takes your operatives to lay or fit those. To do that, you go into the estimating specifications, download your prices from the web, Go into the spec and the specification is simply a set of products drawn from that price book. So if you look towards the top of the screen, you can see that I've got some facing bricks there, normally priced at 75p each. They're part of the brickwork shell, so later on you can say to the software, tell me all the materials I need for the brickwork shell, or using the Gantt chart that's built into Estimator Express, you can plan your deliveries. So, there are 60 of those to the square meter. 60 times 75p is 45 pound square meter. So every material in any building element works like that, whether it's a bag of cement, uh, some, some sand, some skirting boards, all of those prices go in there. In the same way, if I look at the bricks at the bottom of the screen here, you can see that to lay those bricks, I've normally decided that I'm going to use or estimate on the basis of a two and one gang. I've been in and edited the price 65 pound an hour it takes them about 0.6 of an hour to lay a square meter of brick so 0.6 times 65 is 39 pound a square meter now you as the user can change the hourly rate you pay them or you can change their rate of production so the software ref reflects precisely their rate of productivity so again as i'm saying this isn't a broad brush tool it's very accurate so the prices have come down through the specification. We've done the drawing, which has captured all the dimensions, uh, the, the, the lengths of the walls, the area of the walls, the foundation details. It merges that information with the specification, and it will automatically produce a detailed quote for you. It really is that simple. OK, so quick advert there from Crystal Windows, who we use to provide the, the plastic window data. <coughs> Excuse me. Certainly very warm in here. Right, so let's move on to Estimator Express. So there's the My Settings button that you would normally go into to set your prices and your specification. But I'm going to go into My Estimates. I'm going to add a new estimate. And you can see from this menu there are four ways of estimating now with Estimator Express. All of them are compatible. We're going to have a look at Quick Quote in a minute. The Plans Express Import is the button we're going to press at the moment. And the first thing it does, it asks me for the drawing. So I need to go and find that on my desktop. There's the drawing that we did uh, five minutes ago. Bring that into the system and put the customer's name in. Give the job a name. 
I then do what we call selecting a job profile. What that is going to do, it's going to choose the specification we use and also set what we call mini specs. So I'm going to, I'm going to select the extension spec, which is the typical specification as I would use. And you can create your own specification uh, profiles here. So you, you could have a small extension with uh, high quality materials or cheap or a small extension if you're working in central London. All of those things can be captured within the profile. So I select that one, and you'll now see the software has automatically selected my standard home extension profile. It's also picked the bar chart that I use. I could have chosen another one, but I'm going to choose the standard one. Once I've, once I've um, set my profile, if I want to use that profile again, I can save it by simply saving the job profile. I then press Create Estimate. and rapid takeoff will automatically generate the estimate for us. So you can see here that the software is importing the brick and block work, the bifold doors, At the moment, it obviously hasn't done things like uh, plumbing and electric because we didn't actually place the symbols on the drawing. We can actually do that in the, um, the quick quote environment if we wish to. Um, if we have time, I'll show you how to do that later on. But for the time being, we'll just estimate the, the building envelope. So I hope you're starting to get a sense of how quick the software is. We've been talking now for about half an hour, and I spent half of that explaining stuff. So I think you'll be able to see that you will be able to take that drawing off in principle in about a quarter of an hour. Then ask me whether I want to check the lintels. So I'm going to pick a cavity wall, 125 mil wide. Apply that, and the software will automatically set, select a set of lintels that are suitable for that type of wall. Okay, so the software then pauses, and we can have a look and see exactly what the software has been doing. So have a look at the brick and block cavity wall. And if we now look carefully at the, uh, the drawing, the, sorry, the screen now, you can see that there are five walls, uh, five columns. Now, each of these columns correspond with one of the walls that we traced over to create the, uh, the estimate. You can see that uh, there's the, all the lengths of them and the height of the walls that I picked, the area of the openings, the foundation depths, whether or not we're supporting the excavation, we're we plastering it, are we skirting it, what are the heights of the gables, the software's worked out an equivalent dimension there to work out an area, but if we go down here you can see the software worked out the areas, lengths of skirtings, plastering systems and so on. If we scroll further down, you can then see that all of the items are then defined on the left hand side with all of the, the individual products. So I just scroll this over to the left hand side. There is the total quantity of material that we need to construct the extension. So you can see it's going into a very high level of detail. It's not um, you know, it's, not, it's not a broad brush uh, approach at all. As we scroll down, you can see there's the labour for doing all the tasks, mini digger and a skip, or muck away. If I go to another view of the data, it takes those same areas and volumes and applies the specification to them. So down here we have all the materials, what they're used for, the unit cost drawn from the price book, and their rate of use. So let's have a look at the brickwork above DPC. So we picked an 80p facing brick. It's part of the brickwork shell. 80 times 60p is 48 pound a square meter. And at the moment we've got a 7.5% wastage factor allowed in the price book. You can change that if you want. If I scroll further across the screen, I'm going to drop to a row. You can see that we've got 35 square meters. There's the total cost, wastage, and the total number of bricks that we need to construct the wall, including waste. And it's done that for all of the 80 or so items that are required to build the walls. 
I scroll slowly down, you'll see everything is included in there. Again, if we look at the bricks above DPC, there's the bricky laying those materials. There's the quantity and the cost. And for just laying the bricks, it's going to take him about 21 hours. All of the other items are listed below. So all of that's being done instantaneously. Okay, so all of these calculators work in exactly the same way. Right, we have we've only got about 20 minutes left, so I'm now going to move on to a quick quote. So I'm going to close this estimate down. And I'm going to create a new estimate. This time I'm going to use the top button using the quick quote, quick quote template. Incidentally, I can, I can put the full details of the customer in there so that later on they appear in the quote. Just do that because we're going to do a reduce a quote uh, in a minute. Right. Again, I'm going to choose a profile. So I'm going to pick my small extension profile again. You can see the ATP bricks and so on have returned. I then press create estimate and the system will then allow me to pick my quick quote estimate. So it's worth getting your stopwatch going here so that you can see how quickly. So it's 1938 here. So if I make this screen larger, you can see these are all of the different templates that the system will use. And the system will allow you to Lego block these systems together. So you can have a, a conventional uh, apex roofed house, such as this one in the left, and you can mix that with uh, a double valley story extension and add a flat roof single story extension on the back if you want. So you've got total flexibility. The other thing that you can do is you can, um, you can vary the materials. So if you want to do it in render, you can do that. If you want to do it in stone, you can do that. And you can mix them together. So you can have a, a rendered main house with a brick um, front gable on it. Go back to bricks, and on this occasion, I'll do a hip abutment double story extension. The software then asks me to select a profile of how I'm going to construct the roof. Sorry, construct the building. Now we, you, you can create your own profiles here, but we've got what most builders do: brick and block, timber studding, and a cut roof. And you can see that all the other variables exist there with truss roofs rendered finishes, stone finishes, and so on. Pick that one. If I wish, I can, I can also suppress the choose the, the different elements of the job that I want to estimate. On this occasion, I'm going to leave them all exposed so that you can see them. Click OK, and the software loads the standard template for me. So it's now just a question of working around the template and putting in the various dimensions. Which is my tab key to put in the plan dimension, and I work my way here. Do I want to allow for plastering, allow for decoration? Do I want to decorate the faces? No, I don't because they're plastic. What's the depth of the foundations? Well, I'm going to call that 1.2 meters. Um, single skin, assume the same. Height of the ceiling, height of the upstairs ceiling, and the thickness of the floor. What the software will do to calculate the height of the brickwork, it'll add the upper thickness of the floor to the uh, the, the thickness of the floor to the upper ceiling, uh, upper floor to ceiling height. If I had a staircase, I'd put that in with the trimmers, set the pitch of the roof, set the tiling lath, soffit widths, and so on. The other thing that I can do, I can, I, can, I can go into the standard settings if I want, and I can define how I prefer to build. So if I press roofs for argument's sake, I can define what centers I prefer to have my uh, truss rafters, what centers do I want to have my their joists and so on. So spend a couple of minutes in there. If you want, you can then save those as defaults or you can just use them on the particular job. Click OK. Right, so at this stage, because I picked a profile 
and shows all my materials, the software has actually calculated all of the external envelope, the bricks, the blocks, the floors, the roof tiles, the trusses, the skirting boards, everything has been estimated. But let's have a look and see what's actually going on in there. So my downstairs wall, for argument's sake, I could, I could change it if I want to a different uh, construction. I'll leave it as a brick and block, press the edit key, and you can see that it's captured the 2.4 high walls, and it's captured the overall length of the wall going around the extension. At the moment, I've got no windows in there. I click on the gable extension. I haven't got a gable on there because I haven't yet put my roof on. Sorry, I'm, I'm, in, the, I'm in the downstairs. What are my foundation depths? What does my footing look like? And again, I can change all of these. These, as you'll probably notice, that these dialogues are exactly the same information as we had in the rapid takeoff. And my plastering and decorating. All these items in green are actually being inherited from the main uh, inputs that we started with at the top of the screen. So I said I wanted to plaster and decorate. So lo and behold, the system's automatically done that. Press finish. Same thing going on upstairs. Gable, not yet got the roof on. No foundations upstairs, obviously. It's still plastering. Okay. Mesh, choose my roof. Plaster the ceiling. If I vault it, it'll automatically work out the vaulting of the ceiling, but also the adjoining walls. Put a structural opening in there. A couple of them, one upstairs and one downstairs. Confirm the dimensions. Confirm whether I'm plastering and decorating and so on. If I want to override it for some reason I'm not going to plaster, I can just set any individual item to no. Press finish and put in the number of openings that I want to have up and downstairs. The software then will automatically then plaster and decorate the connecting walls. Automatically, it's assuming that we want to um, completely replaster the internal wall uh, either side of the new structural opening. If I don't want to do that, I can set that to not required. But for this time being, I'm going to assume I want that. External doors. Well, we'll pick a crystal door. I fold door for the back. Again, we'll choose a door. Like the lintel and the finish. I want one of those downstairs. Windows. From mock sliding sash. Go for a mock slash. Center bar. Size of the windows. Pick the window. Automatic lintel selection. And let's assume that I want one of those on the side of the extension and a couple, whoops, and a couple of those upstairs. I can e even add heads and sills to it, uh, arches. If I had a vaulted ceiling, I could pick um, velvet windows. I can put internal cavity walls in for a job of this size. As you can imagine, there's no internal walls required, really. Uh, I can put in stud partitions if I want. I can change a particular job to metal studs. And again, I can save those um, back to the library if I so wish. I haven't got any sleeper walls. Um, I haven't got any internal doors on this particular job. Now, here we are in rooms. Now, rooms is quite an interesting uh, area. If I was going to, um, for argument's sake, renovate a room within the main house, I can pick a room. I can define what that room is used for. Let's say it's a bathroom. I can input the size of it. It's inherited the height from the main estimate, but I can change it if I want. I can put um, some openings in there. So height of that opening is 1.95 by 1.85, say. Oops, I'm going to add a window there. And that's 1.2 right, 1 with 0 0.15 repeals. So the software now knows all about the geometry of that room, and I can, for argument's sake, do some renovation to it. So the renovation op options, 
are listed there. If I want to do an internal renovation on it, press select. And on this occasion, I want to hack all the walls, replaster, skirt, decorate. Pick that. I can work my way through the, the, the wizard if I want, but basically it will, it will tell me exactly what I said. I want to plaster it, skirt it, and so on. But if I click quickly through it, you can see there are numerous things that I can do to change the specification, whether I want to have cornices and dados and so on. I'm just going to go with the standards and the software has worked out the cost of plastering that room. So let's um, now add some electrics in it. So it's a bathroom, one off, quick select, and you'll see that the software has suggested a fan, shaver socket, shower circuit, and so on. If I don't want them for that particular job, I can just say no. If I want to add a group of plumbing items, I'm going for a three-piece suite with an internal soil stack. Press select. It asks me to confirm the room size, which is worked out from the room dimensions. And from that, the software then works out the typical arrangement of pipes and sanitary ware, including the waste, a couple of uh, a radiator suitable for the size of the room, radiator tails, valves, and so on. So everything's been automatically uh, selected. If I go back to the main menu now, the main template, you'll see that that is now stored. Now, as I was saying earlier, what you can do with this is you can create a separate template for this and save it into the library so that next time you want to do a bathroom, all you've got to do is load it and say, I want one of those or two of those. And indeed, you can create an entire house. So if you did a lot of renovations, say three bedroom houses, you can create a standard template. And all you have to do is to go into them and tweak them. And you've got an automatic estimate. As you can see, outside of the room, you can also add plastering, decoration, structural beams, walling sundries, and so on. Uh, for argument's sake, you may say, well, I'd, I'd like to put some um, wall starters on that particular uh, extension. So let's pick those. I'm going to pick a 2.4 high one. And it actually allows me to either say I've, I've got numerous ones of those, or I can say, well, I've got about 10 meters one of that running up and down the building. Press finish, and those are priced up. Now, plumbing also appears outside a room. If you want to, for argument's sake, you may want to, if you're building a new house, you may want to put the sort of global planet, uh, plumbing system in for the boiler, uh, the uh, cylinder, thermostats, and so on, which, if you like, sit outside a room and then do all your plumbing for the main house within different rooms. It's entirely up to you. Same with electrics. Um, I can do the drains very quickly. I can, for argument's sake, say for this particular job, all I want is a couple of rainwater pipes connecting to the existing surface water system, or I could pick one and say I want to, I want to go to a modular soak away system or whatever. Press select, and it adds those to them, gives me an opportunity to change the number of bends and so on if I want, or maybe I want to allow a little bit more pipe work to that one, and the same for that one. So very flexible, very easy to do, stops you for getting stuff. And there's a length of drain in there. Maybe I don't need as much as that. Maybe I've got maybe five meters of it. Maybe I want to put concrete protection on it because it runs under a drive and so on. So all, all of that flexibility is there. Landscaping, very easy to do. Fencing and so on. Let's just put a bit of a patio around the back here. That must be somewhere else, sorry. <laughs> the funny thing about this is I've only used this system once. It's, it's literally hot off the press, hot off the press. I press landscape instead of external works. Press select. I want to do a patio. Define the size of the patio. Let's say it's the same width as the main extension. Set the sand blinding, the width of it. And the job is done. On the prelim side, I can, for argument's sake, um, add my scaffolding, um, planning and design costs, and so on. So we'll do, I'll just do the site establishment as we're almost running out of time. And I want the site establishment for a 
medium sized extension. Press select and it recommends the sort of equipment you might need. Now you maybe you're putting a site cabin on the site to so make sure you're complying with health and safety or you may say well no I've, had a, I've got a, an agreement with Mr. and Mrs. Green in the contract that I don't need that but I still want to have security fencing. I still need a skip for clearing the site and but I don't need a sign compound maybe I need a skip and maybe I need to make allowances for health and safety and so on. Press finish and the software has, has completed it. So I think we started at um, 1938 doing this so it's taken us 14 minutes to uh, go through that job and, and describe it all to you. I'll press quick quote it will now build the quote for us. Now while it's doing that, just, just to remind you that in the case of the Plans Express estimate, we did the main building envelope. It was easier to take off the shape of that and place the roof. We can show them 3D model to the client and even do drawings if we want. Um, but for things like the plumbing and electrics, you may decide that it's easier to do those in quick quote and you can merge the information into the plans, uh, the Estimator Express uh, job summary. You've just, just got to make sure that you're not duplicating items. So don't have two lots of walls because the extension will turn out being very expensive. Okay, so it takes about a minute to import the job and then we'll have a look at how to produce uh, a quote. Perhaps have a look at um, some of the outputs that have come through it because I, I want to demonstrate to you again that this isn't a, um, a broad brush um, system. It's you know it's, it's working it out properly and producing a quote that you can rely on. You can see it's bringing in all the copper pipe work, all the radiators, all the sanitary work. Everything is in there, nothing is overlooked. On things like sanitary wear, incidentally, uh, you can go into the workbooks, the calculators, and actually edit the price of the sanitary wear that you're um, providing. So, there we are. I'm not going to review the lintels because we're running out of time you can see that all these items have been estimated. Let's have a quick look and see what the software has actually done. So we'll have a look at the extended half hip roof. Right, you may recall that the, the overall uh, width of the building that we input was um, I think it's five and a half meters, so you can see the overall width there. The span of the joist takes account of the thickness of the wall, soffits and so on. There's the overall length of the wall on the other axis, all the information about the uh, rafters and slope of roof and so on, they've all been captured. It's automatically assessed that we probably need a couple of binders in there and purlins. We could change that if we wanted to. It's confirming that it's plastered and so on. And then once again, as we scroll down, you can see that everything is scheduled. If I go to the filtered view, you can actually see that the software has automatically produced a cutting list of all the materials that you require to build that roof. And if you think about it, you hardly had to do anything. You entered a couple of dimensions in there and selected the roof, and the software has calculated everything. Right the way down to the nails, holding the tiles on, hold it, or holding the hip irons on lead flashings, the whole caboodle, all there straight away. Okay, so hopefully that demonstrates to you that the software is, is doing an awful lot of work very quickly. And before we, we go, we'll just have a look at how to produce a quote. So you go into the reports tab, click on customer quote and I'm going to produce a quote by build phase. 
this stage you can decide how much or how little detail you provide. So if you, if you want to do a broad brush quote for your client, you click on no resources, this sample section of the job shows you that all you're going to say to them is, I'm going to build the footings, there's the cost. If I click on key resources, it will actually explain to the client what those materials are. If I put on all resources, it will even show the sand, sorry, it will even show the plant and labour required for it. Now, nine times out of ten, you won't want to show that to the client, but it is actually a very useful management document. Once you print that out, everybody who's working with you can see precisely what's in there. You can turn the price off, you don't have to give them the price of the job, but you're giving them a very valuable management document. You can put a little picture in the corner, and the client can put their, you can put your own pictures in, you can build an inflation. Because we've got a timeline from the Gantt chart, the software will automatically assess the amount of inflation. All we need to do there is just put in the start date. We can also use what we call customer friendly descriptions. If you watch carefully on the descriptions of the materials, you'll see that they become abbreviated. This gives you more flexibility with what you actually supply rather than having to provide the precise materials which may indeed not even be available. You can also select the order quantities. That will present those on the drawing. Again, some people don't like to do that. They're, they're, afraid, they're afraid that the client may um, take advantage of that. My view is that it's a good idea to show the material quants because it's useful for saying, well, I have actually got something like two, two Velux windows or you know, one bifold door. So the client is, is not misled at all um, about what is actually included in the job. So I'm going to leave that set to on, press print, set the rate of VAT, and the software will generate the quote. So again, just to remind you, we started doing this quote at 19.38. It's taken us 20 minutes, including me talking to you, to uh, estimate the job. So it's, it is very, very fast uh, yeah, uh, to do. And bear in mind, you can also create templates which you can reuse. So if, for argument's sake, you do a lot of lean-to extensions, say with bifold doors, say with um, roof lights, you can create that as a template so that all you have to do is open it, vary the, um, uh, the width of the extension, perhaps change the bifold door from a 3.3 a .3 to a 3 meter, and the job is done. Okay, so you can see that the customer's name has appeared on the estimate. I think exactly the same format of estimate will appear if you're doing it by quick quote process or rapid takeoff. So there's an opening letter there. You can, you can vary that, save it to the library. In fact, you can change the entire document to reflect the font, the style, put your own headings on and so on. So there's the site setup, foundations. So here you can see we've got the structural concrete in the foundations, the labor for doing it. Because I said I, was, I wanted a quote with all the labor and so on, it, this is what it produces. As I say, you normally wouldn't present this to your client it's a useful management document to see how much the software is actually allowed for. Okay, I'm going to close that and I'm going to go for a more simplified quote. This time I'm going to do key resources, press print, click OK. This time it won't produce all the plant and so on in it, which is a more likely scenario for handing to your client. One thing a lot, of, a lot of our clients tell us they do is they use a very detailed quote, probably without the plant and labour, but then they give a very abbreviated one that they leave with the client until they've actually secured the job. Although, incidentally, their success rate is much higher using our form of quotes. Okay, so let's go through this again. And on this occasion, you can see that we've got a much more abbreviated description without all the labour. Everything has been sorted correctly. So we're looking at the brickwork shell for argument's sake. You can see that the lintel, the vertical DPC, is in there for the doors and windows. The wall starters appear there. All the bricks and blocks are in there. The drains with all the pea gravel and bedding and junctions and so on. Roof structure. The timbers are scheduled there. So the client has got a, a very good handle on exactly how much is being estimated.
So if you look down the bottom left hand corner, you can see this is a 17 page quote. So when you go to your client and say, this is what I'm quoting for, they can see that you've actually done a very detailed job and will probably think it's taken you a lifetime to do, which indeed it used to before our software arrived on the scene. So that's about it really um, for this demonstration.